The world's musical instruments can be divided into five general categories based on the manner by which sound or vibration is created. These include aerophones, instruments that use air or wind to produce vibration, that includes the human voice and the pipe organ, membranophones, drums or instruments that use a membrane or skin to produce sound, idiophones, any instrument that are struck or the instrument's body makes the sound itself. That would be like solid body percussion, like a cowbell. Electrophones, any instrument that uses electricity to create the sound, as in synthesizers or electric pianos. And then chordophones, instruments that uses string to generate sound, and that would include the electric guitar. Beyond this, over thousands of years, each instrument group has evolved to include subcategories. For example, chordophones or string instruments can be broken into families, the lute or guitar family, the zither family, and bowed lutes such as the rababa, the arhu, or more commonly the violin or fiddle. What is among the most fascinating stories in musical history is how instruments have evolved into groups or larger bodies or ensembles across thousands of cross-cultural exchanges. And to serve our human need to tell stories, mark the passing of the life cycle by creating strong community events, each of which serves our basic human need to bond and unite socially. Today, the world internet and social networking technology make bonding with the entire world possible, as embodied by the YouTube International Symphony Orchestra Project. Among the groupings of instruments most used in classical music, popular music, and film music or video game music around the world today is the symphony orchestra. Comprised of groups of aerophones, chordophones, and using both idiophones and membranophones as well, the orchestra is like a tonal palette that provides numerous ways to paint pictures in sound. This large instrumental ensemble is most often attributed to European origin. It evolved through street musicians of medieval times, through the Protestant Reformation, into the classical orchestra around Mozart's time, largely as a means of providing composers the musical tools to again paint stories with deep emotional impact. Few Western music history books will dispute this. However, reality concerning the orchestra's evolution is really quite different. The orchestras of ancient Egypt or of the Bedouin tribes of North Africa, or those used to accompany praise songs to God or later poetic song in praise of Muhammad, predate Western orchestras by centuries. In fact, the oud, kanun, rababa, the precursors to the lute or guitar, the piano, and the violin, and the very concept of orchestral combinations of instruments largely found its way into Europe during nearly 300-year conflict between Christian and Muslim societies known as the Crusades. Furthermore, as a result of this conflict, centuries of mistrust and miseducation have deeply impacted our collective perceptions of global codependence and the cross-cultural interaction that has been ongoing between these civilizations for centuries the story of cross-cultural musical exchange and the evolution of the orchestra isn't just about the past, though. 
What makes this story even more fascinating is that today, orchestras using the Western descendant violins, violas, cellos, flutes, clarinets, and trumpets, along with the more ancient Middle Eastern ancestors, the oud, ne, chanun, santur, are used to accompany songs in Arabic, Turkish, or Persian poetic traditions, but now throughout the Arabic diaspora, including across Europe and North America. One such example, the New York Arabic Orchestra, co-founded in 2007 by percussionist April Centron and multi-talented instrumentalist Bassam Saba, originally from Lebanon, educated in Paris, France, and now planted in New York, was created not only to educate Arabic young adults on Middle Eastern pitch systems or magamat, rhythms and compositional structures, but literally to bring musicians from around the world to a deeper appreciation of our world's musical history much of which began in the Middle East. And now as a means of countering centuries of the conflict between Christian and Muslim societies, or misunderstandings between those in the Near or Middle East and in the West, biases that have largely paralyzed the two worlds in the past through the indissoluble connection of the orchestra, young Arab Americans, Arab Europeans, and those who may have no apparent connection to the Middle East at all, may travel back to their collective orchestral roots. This piece, Endak Bahriya by Wadi Al Safi, is performed by Mr. Sana and the New York Arabic Orchestra with special guest Naji Youssef. The piece poetically speaks of the transcontinental travel, the missing of home, and the very fact that we humans love adventure and exchange testimony to the ancient tradition of human cultural fusion. Beginning with the traditional taksim, Mr. Saba introduces the magam, or pitch menu and emotion of the piece, sets the mood, and brings the listener into the world of the story. There is also traditionally plenty of room for spontaneous interaction between musicians and audience that, much like in American jazz, bonds everyone in the auditorium, like a family, to the spontaneity and honesty of the musical story. The ancient tradition of Arabic poetic singing will now take us on a trip deep into the emotions of love, a journey through sacrifice and hardship, diverse rhythms and melodies that will inevitably connect the storyteller and listener to the creator, all hallmarks of Middle Eastern music and poetry.
حبيب القلب حبيب القلب نادانا فرحنا نزرع ورد ونحضر فرحنا حبيب القلب نادانا نادانا فرحنا نزرع ورد ونحضر فرحنا وإذا 